I prefer to use an airbox on a carburetor, especially on two strokes, instead of what seems to be the more popular option of a pod filter. So for me, I've done some back to back testing in the past. I had a 103cc two stroke and it would rev out to about 10,500 to 12,000 RPM, top out at about 70 miles per hour. So at that point, I was running a 25 millimeter carburetor and I assumed that I pretty much had to run a pod filter because I thought the stock air box wouldn't flow enough. So I ran the pod filter, got it in tune, and I found that small environmental changes would mean that I had to change the tune or I had to deal with the effects of the changes on the carburetor. So basically the humidity would change, the temperature would change, and the carburetor tune would be all kinds of out of whack. Um, and I'm not even talking about huge changes here. Small swings from day to day could be enough that I'd notice it in the tune. So I got tired of that pretty quick and I decided to modify a stock air box and see what happened. So I put a modified stock air box on there and I found that I got the same performance. Top speed didn't change, um, felt the same accelerating, but what I gained was I didn't have to retune the thing every day. Um, any kind of more leaning toward race oriented setup will probably need some kind of adjustment. Even typical stock um, street setups will need adjustments from time to time as the weather changes with big swings. Um, but it shouldn't be just day to day that the tune is off and it wasn't that way with a modified stock airbox. So from that point on, I've been a pretty big fan of using a modified stock airbox when I can instead of going to a pod filter. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that a modified stock airbox will be the best for every setup because I'm sure there's a point where they just can't keep up with the demands of the engine. But for me, I've used it on that 103cc that I told you about and I currently have one on my 86cc TPR revving out to about 14,000 RPM, should be roughly 20 horsepower and it's still working fine for me. So I think for a lot of us, this is a good option. Here's a look at my current setup. So I've got a Polini intake on there, a Del Orto PHBL 25 millimeter carburetor, and then I've got a blower vacuum hose that leads to a coupler and then to a modified stock air box. So basically what we need to accomplish is to connect the carburetor to the air box. And in this case, you can see it's pretty simple. I've got this blower vacuum hose it's hose clamped to the mouth of my carburetor and then it goes into this coupling that then attaches to my air box. So coupling to carburetor, pretty simple, just a hose and some hose clamps. And it could work out a little different um, depending on your exact setup, but usually it's not much more complicated than that. While I'm at it, I want to give you a couple of quick air box related tips. So first off, these are both air boxes for horizontal Minarelli engines like the 1E40 QMB, the Yamaha Zuma, Jog, etc. But if you look at these two together, this one clearly has a very small diameter here on this hose that attaches from the air box to the carburetor compared to this one. And you can look at them from the side, and it's obvious even from the side that this is a much smaller hose than this one here. So if you're going to use an air box with a larger carburetor, then I would highly suggest trying to get an air box like this that has that larger hose. Or you may even be able to just pick up the... Uh, the hose here itself. This air box with a smaller intake hose came off of one of my stock Chinese scooters. I can't remember which one, but it's pretty common on them. This one I ordered for a Polaris 90 um, youth ATV. So I just went on eBay, I searched Polaris 90 air box, and these came up. Um, but all you've really got to do if you're looking for an air box is look at the pictures. And if you pay close attention, again, look at the size of this thing and look at the size on this one. And it's pretty obvious which one is the larger hose. So try to get the one that looks like the larger hose if you're going to be using this air box with a larger carburetor. The next tip will make mounting the air box to the carburetor easier. So this boot should be pretty pliable, pretty soft, and pretty flexible. But especially over time, these things can harden up and it can be hard to mount this to a carburetor. Definitely hard to mount it to a larger carburetor. So what you can do is just use a heat gun and go around there real quick, heat it up just a little bit. You don't want to get this thing smoking or melt it, but just put a little bit of heat into that and you should feel that it gets softer and it'll make it easier to mount to your carburetor. So I've shown you this hose that just clamps to the carburetor mouth and it clamps into this coupler, but how do you attach that coupler to this air box? Here's what mine looks like. 
So you can see my airbox now has a metal piece coming out that makes it easy to slip this coupler over and connect it. I've been using this particular modified airbox for about eight or nine years now and you can see that the last remaining mount on this airbox is about to crack all the way off and then I can't mount it the way I have been. So for that reason I bought this replacement airbox and I figured since I've got to modify it to fit I might as well show you guys how easy it is to do it. The first thing I need to do is to remove all the screws that hold the airbox halves together. So you can kind of see down in here we've got these deep little passages in the front of the airbox and there are screws down in there. In this case I've only got three. Some of these will have five in here and then you'll have two down here and two on the side. But just make sure you find all of them and remove every screw that holds the airbox halves together. And it should usually just be a Phillips screwdriver. Once you're sure you've got all the screws out of there, it should be pretty easy to just lift off half of the airbox. If it's not, then you need to double check make sure you don't have any screws left. Next thing I'm going to do is to remove the air filter. And that's usually just sitting over the pegs here. So you just basically pick that up and carefully remove it from all the pegs. And then you can set that aside. Now I'm going to focus on this half of the airbox that has the outlet to the carburetor. And I don't want this outlet boot on there, so the first thing I'll do is remove this boot. And usually you can just kind of push in on the rubber that you'll see down here on the inside, and push in from the outside as well, and it should just pull out of there. If it's really tough, you can use heat just like I showed you before, just a small amount of heat. Also, this one didn't have it, but some of these will use a sealant to seal this boot into the hole here. So you may have to use something to carefully remove that sealant or to at least break the seal between the boot and this hole. Now I've got a hole in the airbox, but I want to be able to attach a hose to go to my carburetor. So in some cases you may be able to find a hose that's rigid enough and fits snugly enough that you could probably seal that in there with some type of glue. Um, this one actually looks like it wouldn't work that bad. It's fairly snug as is. You may even be able to get away with it that way. But I prefer to have something that I can clamp on so that I know it's firmly in place. So what I want to do is I want to end up with this. But you can see I've got this metal piece coming out of the airbox. But where do you get this metal piece from? Well, let me flip it over. Some of you may recognize this um, just from what you're seeing here. So here's a look at that metal piece not installed in an airbox. And if you're not sure what that is, let me show you. So that is the torque driver cover. In this case, this is an old torque driver I've got from a 139 QMB, the Chinese four-stroke scooters. Um, but the 1E40 QMB or the Minarelli ones tend to be about the same size. And it just so happens that this diameter matches up well with what I need for my hose coupling. And also, this is very close in size to this hole in the airbox. Now, it won't actually quite fit, but it's really, really close to being able to fit right now. I'm going to end up using a rotary tool to open this hole up just enough that this can fit through there. And ideally, you open it up only enough that you've got a snug fit through there. But before I do any of that, first thing I do is slide this in. In some cases, these will work out well. Here you can see that with this airbox, I'm actually biased to one side. So because of the lip on here and the way that this particular airbox is made, um, it wants to stop it from going all the way up against there. So you may actually need to grind some of this down. And when you're grinding to open this hole up, bias your grinding to create clearance on the side that you need it the most. So I would want to grind a little more toward this side than I do on this side. Also, you don't actually have to use this particular piece. You could just use a piece of tubing. Some people even use PVC pipe. Get something that fits in there or again make it fit and then you just glue it into place. I actually kind of like this because it has that lip on there. It's a nice solid steel piece that I can clamp to and don't have to worry about. And I figure that lip, first off, makes it so I can't pull it through this way because of the lip. And also it gives me something a little extra to glue to when I get to gluing this in there. Since I've got a lathe, there is a lip around this outside edge that sticks up that isn't necessary for this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off in the lathe. 
but you can see that this one that I've been using for like I said eight or nine years still had that lip on there and it worked absolutely fine for me so you don't actually have to take that off I'm just gonna do it basically because I can there's how it looks after cutting that lip off I'm also gonna go ahead and grind one side of it a bit flat that way it should help with the offset that you can see when I try to put it in this air box. Now you can see if I slide that in with a flat piece down, it's pretty close. The bias isn't very far in one direction. So now I've just got to open this hole up a little bit to allow this to fit through there. I'll be using this rotary tool with a carbide burr, but you could use things like files, possibly sanding, or maybe even a razor knife or utility knife and just kind of shave the edges around there, depending on exactly how far you've got to modify it. As you can see that fits through there nicely now. You don't see a bunch of gaps all around the edges. Fits fairly snug and it fits right up against the inside there. It's not sticking out at all. So I want to glue this in but before I do that I'm going to take it back out and then I want to go over the area where the glue will be which is right up here around this hole with some very coarse sandpaper. I'm going to use 60 grit but 60, 80, 100, 150, something like that should be fine. Just rough that surface up there a bit. And if you'd like, you can even rough the surface up here where the uh, glue will come into contact with this piece. Before trying to glue this into your air box, you're gonna to wanna to clean both pieces with something to get any kind of dirt and grease off of there. I'm just going to go over it with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Now it's time to glue this in place. And there are quite a few options for that. I've used basically two products. The first one that I tried was a plastic welding product. This one's by JB Weld, but a lot of companies make it. And uh, the ones I've tried so far have worked fairly similarly. Um, that worked pretty well. That's actually the first thing that I used in here. All this uh, yellowish residue that you can see spread way out in there that was a plastic weld product and that lasted more than five years in there eventually it got brittle and cracked and then i redid it and when i redid it i used this uh jb clear weld epoxy uh just happened to have it around thought i'd give it a shot and that's all the glossy clear stuff that you can see coating everything and so far that has worked very well and it doesn't seem to be very brittle so when I do this one, this new one, I'm going to try the JB Clear Weld. One thing that's kind of nice about any of these products that use a dual syringe setup versus the ones that come with two tubes that you have to squeeze them out is that they're super easy to mix. Basically all you have to do is depress the syringe, get it to come out however much you want, and then mix it together. You don't have to worry about measuring anything out. So I'm going to spread a little bit onto this lip here on my part. And you can probably see that this is an old toothbrush that I'm using, um, that I've been using to clean things. But I did actually clean the toothbrush with alcohol to make sure that I didn't have any kind of contaminants when I was applying this. It just happened to be what I had around. And then I'll put a little bit right around the edge here as well. And once that's done, just go ahead and insert that how it needs to be oriented and push it into place. And once it's in there, if I've got leftover, then I just go ahead and spread a little bit of that around the edges. Probably doesn't need it, but I'm gonna throw it away anyhow. I've got this epoxied into place, and they say five minutes setup time on there, but before I work with this stuff, I prefer to give it at least overnight, if not the full 24 hour cure time. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. I'm going to address another issue while I'm waiting for the epoxy to dry. 
and that is the inlet to the air box or what a lot of us call the snorkel this thing right here so that's pretty easy to remove just squeeze it and pull that out of there and you'll see that you're left with a fairly large hole for the inlet of the air box and then if you look at the inside of the snorkel it's a lot smaller than that hole is so you can free up some airflow that way and some of these snorkels are designed very restrictive um, this one's not actually bad but some of them have a very small inside diameter there and some of them are actually long tubes so that makes it even worse um, for the restriction so some people remove those on stock carburetors uh, with a stock setup if you do anything like that then make sure you go over your carburetor tune because it's going to lean out the mixture if you remove any kind of significant restriction anyway moving on I'm going to toss this aside because I won't use this anymore and this hole may be large enough for anything I need but I tend to enlarge those um, here's a look at the one that I have been using for years and you can see that I've just opened that up basically as much as I could in there um, to create as much of an inlet space as possible without getting into any edges or anything structural so I'm going to do the same thing here basically I'm going to try to open this up a little more toward the outside edge here and kind of come down here and flatten it out and again I'll be using a, a rotary tool with carbide burr and some files and maybe some sandpaper and I don't know how necessary this is but it seems to me that if I've got something like a 25 millimeter carb then I definitely wouldn't want a very small hole here for the intake here's how that turned out so now I don't have to worry about that being a restriction and after using the rotary tool I filed it I sanded it to make sure everything was smooth and then I took it in the house and washed it with soap and water because I don't want any particles inside of the air box it's kind of unrelated but I thought I'd show you while I'm at it so I told you that this is a cheap stock replacement air box um, and this is the filter that came with it really thin foam not a whole lot to it and I'm used to even the Chinese scooters have something actually very similar to what the Yamahas do which is a much thicker kind of dual stage it's got two sorts of textures two materials here um, but kind of a dual stage filter and if you look at the thickness of those two side by side the stock filter is about twice as thick as what I've got here with this replacement this thing may work fine but I happen to have some uni filter material here it's 3 eighths of an inch thick and it's fine foam That fits pretty well and it's snug around these little posts. Before the filter can be used it needs to be oiled. There are a lot of brands. I'm going to use Maxima Fab One. Uh, Uni makes air filter oil for their filters. Um, plenty of stuff to choose from but follow the manufacturer's directions on that. Just make sure you don't put too much oil in, on there. Um, you don't want it soaked. Now I can install the filter into the air box and just push it down over those little posts. The epoxy cured so now this piece is secure in the air box and I would be ready to put this back together except I noticed another problem with my cheap air box which is that normally there's some sort of seal around here and this one included none at all. So what I did was I actually took the seal out of my old air box um, and I'm going to try and put that around there but if you didn't have a seal what you could do is go out and find uh, weather stripping that's an appropriate size now I'm finally ready to put the two halves of the air box back together so all I'm going to do is flip this over kind of match it all up and press them together if you look around the edges you'll see 
you'll know when you uh, have it aligned properly. Then once it's aligned properly, I need to go ahead and put in the three screws that I initially took out to take it apart. This part's a lot easier if you use a magnetic screwdriver or at least one that fits the screw very well. That way you can hold it and put it down in there. Just be gentle starting it because you don't want to strip out the plastic. And these don't take a whole lot of torque. Next up I need to mount this to the scooter. In my case, very simple. I've actually got tabs welded onto my frame specifically for the air box. So all I've got to do is bolt it on. You may have to get a little more creative than that. And to finish up, all I've got to do is connect this hose coming from my carburetor with a coupler onto this piece that we just installed into the air box. So that's just going to slide onto there. And I can clamp it down. So there we go. Modified air box working with 25 millimeter aftermarket carburetor. I got a couple more small pieces of information that may be useful to you before I wrap the video up. So first off, this blower vacuum hose that I mentioned early in the video. I bought this from McMaster Car. Um, this particular piece is eight or nine years old and shows no signs of aging that I can tell. Um, it's also very strong, the spiral winding in there. You don't have to worry about it crushing. It's really strong stuff. Um, so McMaster Car. Maybe uh, aircraft spruce, places like that, should have this kind of stuff. Also, radiator hose um, may be able to work depending on the size you need. But a lot of times you can get these formed hoses with 90 degree, 45 degree, whatever kind of bend you would need in there. So that stuff uh, could possibly work for you. Check an auto parts store. And along the same lines, you can buy silicone hoses. And a lot of times with that, you can buy individual bends, straights, whatever you need there. So that's another option. I also want to show you these pictures that Ryan Ott submitted to the forum some time ago. And you can see that he used a PVC coupling in the airbox attached to a 90 degree silicone bend for a really clean way to attach his stock airbox to a larger carburetor. Hopefully I've shown you that with just a little bit of creativity, there's nothing stopping you from using an airbox with your larger carburetor if you want to do that. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, please give it a like and share it. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.